no plans, no plans at all Evil man's always transcending Fight her like sheep, swallow everything Always simple tins or pretending We got no plans with the manufactured 24-hour corporate news cycle, it's extremely rare to see someone breaking the set from within, which is why I'm very excited for my next guest. He's someone who is bold enough to go on Fox News and call the network a festival of ignorance. And on top of that, he's mastered the art of truth-telling through comedy. So joining me now from New York is Lee Camp, comedian, activist, and creator of the Movement of Clarity viral web series. Lee, awesome to have you on. Hey, Abby, I'm a long-time viewer, first-time guest. Sweet, man. Well, hopefully you can be on more and more. Uh, you know, I'm here in D.C. painstakingly had to sit through this inaugural dog and pony show. First of all, why are we doing this huge ceremony to celebrate someone who's already been seated for four years? Come on, Abby, you know why we do it. We've got to get together every four years so that we can all talk about the first lady's hair. <laughs> I mean, that, that seems to be the one thing that came out of this inauguration was talk of her hair. I mean, I can't, if, if she came out with your haircut, I think the mainstream media might explode. <laughs> Exactly. It's, a, it's like a fashion show. I mean, the diamonds, the glitz and glamour, talking about the ball, what they're wearing, Ugh, what, how, how Clinton was look at, looking at Kelly Clarkson's butt through her jeans, you know. And here you had a million people all waving these tiny American flags that look like, I mean, they're all decked out in their, their Obama hyphy gear. And I couldn't help but think, did these people forget what a bad president he's been for the last four years? Yeah, you know, it's it's a nice little uh, let's let's forget the past four years and let's try and pretend uh, we're we're starting over again. But one thing we did all agree on at the inauguration was apparently that no one can handle poetry anymore. <laughs> what do you mean? Do <laughs> you remember though? Blanco read a poem. He was the first, you know, the the he was he was gay and Latino, and <laughs> it was a big moment for everything. And instead, you had all the Republicans mainly sitting there snorting at him because they couldn't stand that there was a poet. Right, Up on right. Stage. How, how dare you? How dare you bring that in? Uh, you know, one thing that Obama condemned in his speech, which I thought was particularly interesting, was the idea of perpetual war. I mean, Lee, uh, are we living in the twilight zone here? I mean, did I miss something? Hasn't perpetual war been perpetuated by Obama? Yeah, yeah, we've got the infinite war thing going. I think every war should come with a bomb by date, you know, like milk. It's just like the moment they start, you have a bomb by date, and it doesn't matter if you're not done. It's after that date, you, you gotta stop. Just for, it should be like milk. It should be just over on a date. But, but uh, you, you do have to give the Obama administration credit for one thing. They realized too many civilians were dying from drone aircraft attacks, too many civilians dying, so they did something about it. They changed the definition of the word civilian. <laughs> exactly. Now it's militant. I mean, that's when you can get high-level defense officials coming out and saying, no, no civilians have died. Oh, oh, you mean just all those military-age males who are just dead? Oh, no, 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 they're terrorists. They're terrorists. They're brown yeah, and they're dead, so they must be terrorists, right? Exactly. And the, and the problem is, a word, you know, they changed it so that any military-age male in a target area is now a combatant. But that's got to apply to us, too. So if you're near a Marine at an airport or something, you thought you were just an overweight accountant sitting at, you know, working on Cinnabon number two and love handle number seven. But no, you're a combatant. <laughs> Lee, I mentioned your appearance on Fox News earlier, but it really, talking about it doesn't do it justice. I want everyone to take a listen. Let's play that. What? Can I, can I just ask a question? Sure. What, what is Fox News? It's just a parade of propaganda, isn't it? It's just a, it's just a festival of ignorance. What? Why, a million Fox people are dead in Iraq. Come on, this is ridiculous. What's the point of this? Um, this is insane. Well, I love, uh, go out, I love people Fox at home, News. go outside. Go, go hug Lee, your children. you should be more, well, Fox you News should be more worried. Love your family. You know, and you get all the news. You get all the news you can at Fox News. All right, thanks. And guys. I think, oh, okay. All right, that's it. All right, we're also talking about Captain. Kirk. I love that he tosses to Captain Kirk after you're like you Trojan horse them, man. You go in there. How the hell did you get on? And how did they react after you said that? Well, they expected me to just play the game like most people, you know. They knew I was left wing, but they, they thought I would just come on and, and be nice and tell little jokes, but I had no interest in that. I mean, with the amount of blood that's been shed over the various wars, I, I wasn't going to be their monkey boy, so I went in and told the truth. And telling truth in the Fox News studio, that, that's like a bad smell. They all freak out and make ugly faces at you. And, uh, and, and uh, the best part was that they did accidentally provide their own punchline by them throwing it to something about <laughs> Captain Kirk getting laid. So, 
<laughs> but that's really serious. That's way more serious than a million dead Iraqis. Come on, Lee. Let's, <laughs> I want to I talk, <laughs> talk about the corporate news in general. I mean, what is it about this Monty Teo fake girlfriend stunt that gives the media such a hard on? Yeah, the, the Manti Teo thing, you know what it really shows is just the, the, the lack of any effort to do any research into anything by the media. This is a Heisman Trophy runner-up, and they can't figure out that his dead girlfriend is made out of toothpicks and silly putty. I mean, she made Wilson the volleyball in Castaway look uh, <laughs> downright talkative. It doesn't, it, like, it, it, it's just a complete lack of any effort to do research. I mean, the Lance Armstrong thing, this guy's been, you know, seven Tour de France's and they never researched. He, it's not, you know, they love to call it the advanced, you know, doping scandal. That's how they couldn't break the, break the open the story. But he was picking up drugs in the parking lot of McDonald's. This is performance enhancing drugs. Anything that is gained or gathered at a McDonald's, not generally performance enhancing, usually <laughs> makes you obese and diabetes. So they should have known something was up. But no, our media does no research anymore on anything. <laughs> Lee, one of my favorite things that I've seen uh, is just when you talked about advertising. I mean, television in general has gone totally downhill. Uh, you, you said that the average human spends 15 years of their lives watching brainless television. I mean, think about all the advertising that that's just melting our brains. I mean, what is that really doing to us? Yeah, I mean, it's true. Over an 80-year lifespan, and these, you know, these are old numbers. These are five years ago. Over an 80-year lifespan, 15 and a half years of having our brains liquefied and sodomized and glorifying products and nonsense, and it does. It, 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 it completely, you know, it's, it's how you end up with a country with the most anorexic people in the world and the most obese people in the world at the same time because people are, they're selling these awful foods that aren't even food and at the same time making people feel horrible about their bodies, and so it's completely screwing us up, you know? Yeah, no, no, totally, man. Like, the fast food nation and everyone's just dying, GMOs, etc. And then they're like, you, you know, you have acne, you're not good enough, you, you can't get your, <laughs> you know, you need, a, you have erectile dysfunction, restless leg syndrome. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I, my legs kind of are restless when I'm watching TV for eight hours in a row. Maybe I'll self-diagnose and go get pop them pills, but I can't let you go without yeah. asking you about the 40th anniversary of the ceasefire in Vietnam. I mean, do you see any similarities between the Red Scare and the War on Terror, or is it just me, Lee? Yeah, no, I think there is a similarity in that you've got to keep people afraid all of the time. I mean, the, the war on terror is, you know, twice as many people die from terrorist attacks in America each year. I'm sorry, twice, twice, twice as many people die from peanut allergies as from terrorist attacks. So you see where I'm headed with this point. We need to work equally hard to protect ourselves from peanuts, all right? We need a <laughs> peanut alert chart. We need, we need to, if someone leaves a bag of peanuts unattended, we got to blow that up. we got to drop Marines into the planter's compound to shoot shoot Mr. Peanut in the face, Absolutely. all right? And, 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 and that goes, too, for anyone who wants to wear a monocle and a top hat. If you want to dress like a peanut, we will treat you like a peanut. <laughs> Thank you so much for making me laugh. I needed that. Lee Camp, comedian, activist. Really appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Abby. No plans at all. Evil man's always transcending. Fight like sheep. Swallow everything. Always simple tins or pretending.